setting up annotation standards, hatching, or also known as in Revit, fill patterns. So we're talking about hatching or fill patterns. So in order to start this, let's go into our detail. So I'm on sheet A4, section and detail. I'm going to click on this view right here and just right click and activate the view. And right on here, we could add in a filled region. In fact, that one right there is a filled region. It's called concrete one. We did touch upon this in the previous course in the fundamentals course, but I am going to review this a little bit. So what we're really focusing on is not necessarily the filled region object, but the fill inside of it or the hatches that are being used everywhere. How are those controlled? Well, if I go to manage and then I go to additional settings, notice fill patterns. So I can click on fill patterns and these are all of the fill patterns or hatches that are being used throughout this particular project in Revit. You have two types of patterns. One is model, one is drafting. Model hatches are used usually on the exterior. They are a literal size and do not change. So if you're going to choose an 8-inch tile for something, it's an 8-inch tile. You can measure that no matter where you are. Same thing like bricks are a perfect example. But if you're cutting through a brick, maybe you want to use the masonry brick hatch. It symbolizes brick, but the distance between these lines is basically consistent on a visual level. So let's take a look at that. So for instance, concrete. So if I go up here to concrete, that's there, that's a standard one. That concrete, no matter what scale these views are at, the concrete hatch will stay the same. So if I were to deactivate this view and then activate this view, and I'll go into the visibility graphics and just go to walls. What I'm going to do is turn off this black solid fill, I'll clear the overrides, and then OK and OK. Notice now on walls, you can see the hatch. Those little triangles and lines are exactly the same as those, even though the scales are different. Just right click and deactivate that view. So how do we make new ones and add more in to our project? Well, let's go back to our manage, additional settings, fill patterns. You can click on new and you can make your own. So you could make one called Acme Brick 1. And maybe you want it to be a 45 degree angle and you want the spacing to be 564 ths because we love that number. And it's parallel lines. Do you want it cross hatched or parallel lines? Those are the only choices you have. It's very simple. Okay, now we have a new one called Acme Brick. It can be used in any family inside of this project. What if we wanted a more complex one? Well, we could click on new, go to custom, and you could import a .pat file. We don't have one here right now, but they can be found in many, many different places on the internet. And just from the years of using .pat files in CAD, bring that in and it will bring in the file just fine and it will use it as a hatch. There is a setting here under orientation and host layers. Really what that means is orient to view or keep readable or align with element. Orient to view just means if you're hatching something, the lines will always stay kind of parallel to your view no matter what. So no matter where the object is going, the diagonal lines would always stay diagonal. Align with element though is good for things like brick hatches and that because it'll align with the element. So if it turns a corner, then the hatch will turn a corner too, which is what you want. So align with element. Model hatches are different. You can click on new. I mean, they're different, very, very similar in how you make them, but essentially you're, instead of giving it like a printed size, you're giving it a literal size. This is the size it's going to be if you measure the model. So we could call this one Acme Siding. So you can't really make brick just using their tools here because it's just either a cross hatch or parallel lines. Line angle is going to be 90, just parallel lines. This is going to be Acme siding vertical. And 8 inches apart, maybe we go 6 inches apart. And then we say OK to that. 
So no, that can be used on any object, any family. Now, I want to talk about making new custom model patterns. There's a little bit of a trick to this that we're going to talk about. So here we are on my blog. This is Revit in plain English. And I wrote a, a little article about Revit fill patterns. And you can see that basically this is all of what I've been explaining up until now. But the part that I wanted to focus on was this right here, which is fill patterns for model hatches. So you can download tons of these AutoCAD PAT files, but they will not work until you make a little edit to them. And just going to paraphrase this, that the PAT files can be opened and edited in Notepad. So what I've done is included in the data sets just two sample hatch files for you to look at. And the one is called 0311 third run. So I'm going to double click on that and just open that. And this just opens up in a notepad and you can see it right here. So that's the sort of complex pattern here. And it's just a running bond type of um, pattern. But notice this is the one right from AutoCAD. Okay, looks fine, but it's missing something. You have to add the following information. And I'm just going to close this one and not save it. You see this? You have to add this to the second line of the PAT file. It works with anyone. Okay, so let's open the one called 0311 third run model. There it is there. It's in your data sets. Third run, third run running bond. Same thing, exactly the same. The only thing that was added was that. And that will allow you to use this as your own hatch. Okay, so let's try this out. So I'm going to go back into Revit. And we're adding a surface pattern. And I'm just going to sort of start from scratch here. So just in case you were not right there. So manage and additional settings will go to fill patterns. I'm going to make a model hatch new. It's not a simple one. It's a custom one. And this is where we're going to call it Acme Brick 2. We're going to import the PAT file. So right in our data sets, we can go to third run model. Now, if I just bring in third run, it's going to give me an error. So I'm going to go to third run model and then open that. And then there it is. Now, the import scale, sometimes you have to work with that a little bit. I'm just going to say OK. And then there it is there. Now, it, the preview is a little bit deceptive. It actually comes out a little bit better than that. But uh, if I just click on edit, you have to watch this. You see how we named it? And then it kind of took its name again. So I'm just going to call this Acme Brick 2. And then there it is. OK. OK, so we've brought that new hatch family in. But we're going to look a little bit later on how to actually apply that and to tweak it a little bit so it's right for our particular project. OK, so let's just save what we've done and close. And that concludes this video.